hope you're doing great today. I'm not doing anything crazy tonight. Uh, no bikes, no this, no that, the other. I might actually try and start to do some kind of wilder uh, videos again as the weather warms up. We'll see if I've got it in me. Uh, I find that people tend to uh, phone me more or at least <laughs> text me more when they're watching these videos and say, uh, what, what were you doing there the other night? How did you do that? It's very cute to see people's responses. I have uh, a lot of things that I want to share in the next coming weeks. And how do you, the way to get there in life, in your faith walk with the Lord. We have looked at this concept of outpouring. In the Old Testament, you have pictures. Many of them are very, very, very well known pictures of uh, or glimpses of the outpouring of the Spirit. And when you say this, there's a purpose beyond uh, the outpouring. Now, the outpouring is an amazing thing, but there's two things. Number one, God begins to restore things. Every picture in the Old Testament of outpouring, Joel says, uh, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Peter says, this is that. But when you see these in these verses, it's not hidden, it's right there, but we miss them. In these verses is these promises and every picture has a promise of restoration. There's actually two main themes of promises that the outpouring does. All the glimpses show you a different picture of outpouring. Now, in Daniel, in Joel, there's different promises that play out on a personal level for Daniel and the people of Israel. Now for Joel, as they cry out, um, the locusts have eaten all this stuff, there's individual purposes. There's several, uh, probably five to eight main pictures that give you a glimpse of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Each picture, you can't really connect the dots too much, but there's there's not similarities, There there's there's commonalities. Each picture fills in things about what will happen in our day. And it's very uh, important and likable to know this. These are likable promises. When people hear this stuff, they don't know what's in there. They're like, oh, I like that. It's very funny, but it's funny how we don't know what's there. But when we find out, we like it. Sometimes, if you ever had a gift, one of the things about uh, Christmas or maybe a birthday, because Christmas is nowhere near us at the moment, I think what you like about getting gifts is they're wrapped up. You don't know what they are. When you open them, you're surprised. You like getting there. And there's things that are likable in here. God says, those that come to me must believe that I am and that I'm a rewarder of the diligently, uh, those that diligently seek me. These things are likable that God has. And each one of us, although we're gifted differently, the outpouring is the same. Uh, gifts may be uh, varying from person to person. The calls may be different, but the outpouring is on point the same for everybody. It's the same spirit. The Bible says we're given one spirit to drink. It says there's one faith, one spirit, one Lord. Very important to just touch on this for a minute. You can have a variety of personalities. You're all receiving the same Holy Spirit. You're all receiving not just the same Jesus, but the same outpouring, the same spirit is being poured out to each one. It may be that the people uh, have a different ability from God or different personalities. There's a very funny thing going on right behind me. You might have noticed you're not seeing things. You're like, is that smoke behind Paul? Don't worry, I know about the smoke. There's no beekeeper back there flushing out a beehive. It's just a bonfire. One of the things on the day of Pentecost, each one received, every person, all 120, received individual tongues of fire, like a flame for every head. Everyone received the same spirit to drink. Same Lord, same spirit, one spirit, one Lord, one gospel, one Bible. Uh, and all of it, when you see the promises, they are likable. It's very likable to see what's given in here. All of the things that are given aren't necessarily the same, depending on the gifts or the people or the time. Daniel was called to do one thing, but the images of the outpouring, it's not that they're interchangeable. 
It's that they all give you a glimpse of a different component of what God is going to bring about in these last days. Very significant things. It's not just symbols, it's real. A couple ideas that uh, we might think of, you know, well, would God do this or would God do this? There is so, there's nothing new that you have to come up with. to Like when God moves, he says, behold, I will do a new thing. Sometimes the new things that God does are your entrance to understand them is in these Old Testament pictures of outpouring. One of the things that happens is what's called restoration. There are so many things that God can restore. I will restore the grain, the new wine, the oil, and the new oil. New wine is always in the Bible, Holy Ghost power. New oil is always a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The grain here are the promises of God in this particular instance. Grain can mean a couple different things in different spots. Sometimes it just means grain. But when it's spiritual, uh, when you see it here, it's not just talking about grain. It is, but it's talking about something else in these instances. When you look at Deuteronomy, the, a lot of times you look at the people of Israel going into the promised land. <clears throat> Moses said, if you do everything I command and all the things that... Uh, the word of God, if you obey them in your heart, <coughs> then you will get the new wine, the new oil, and the new grain. One of the things that's always restored is that statement, almost invariably in the pictures of the Old Testament. Now, I know this gets very complex to follow, so I'm coming up with a sheet. I will have it at church. It will be pages long. It'll show you, like, what are these components that you start seeing glimpses of in the Old Testament. You will have restored to you a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit, one spirit to drink, and we'll all get the same thing. It won't be necessarily <coughs> the same gifts, but it'll be the same spirit. All of us get the same outpouring. We don't all have the same experience in the outpouring. So this is where I want to just take a moment and focus on our own personal heart. Your experience in the outpouring, you'll receive the same spirit, but your experience will be defined by your heart. The hardest thing to get to is not the gifts, this, that. The hardest thing to get to is to understand this. It's the same outpouring, the same spirit. God's holding on to all of us for these promises to reach to us. He's calling they come out of eternity into time. It's the same outpouring when we start receiving it. But the question is, what makes the experience different is our heart. Our heart is what will define what happens in the outpouring. God's promised everything if we believe it in our heart, if we take what God has done and we apply it into our lives. If he starts coming out of eternity, as I've been talking about, into time we have to call it the we call it the touch of god people literally say i was touched by god that is literally what we call it because into a moment of time something comes and things that were fixed everything changes behold i do a new thing i make paths in the wilderness and streams in the desert is what god spoke in the old testament well, however your day is going, if God starts to move, if the touch of God comes, the trajectory of your life will be defined, A, by the touch of God, God doing it, but B, it's your choice of your heart. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for those that love him. It's all going to be good. And it, you, it's surprising when we find out it's good. But what it, what it will do in you will, will happen based on our attitude of our heart. In our heart, we just have to decide, am I going to listen to God? Am I going to turn my heart to him? The one thing that's constant is every outpouring that's given in time, we have to choose in our heart to follow. Even in the Old Testament, time, time, time again, they have to turn their heart, turn their heart, turn their heart every single time. The heart is the thing that turns the tide when God starts to move. If my heart turns to, the, to you, Lord, you can take something and do something new. 
God will piece things together. He will restore so much stuff. We often talk about the word restore, not just things you've personally lost or you, you fouled up. Restoring things that were taken from the, at the fall are in there. Things that are not even conceivable for us. You say, well, how do you say that? No eye has heard, no mind has conceived. We couldn't think of the stuff that's in here. And then the second thing that's on top of the restoration, there's two things too in the Bible. Restoration comes through outpouring. And the second one is harvest. I haven't even started bringing it up. Because many people talk about the harvest, but the Bible says the process to the harvest, the harvest doesn't even start until the restoration has come in its fullness. Has God, you don't want the harvest. Lots of people say, I want the harvest. I want God to flood and I want all these things to be done. You won't even begin to, like, to, to elevate the harvest until the restoration. It's actually set up that way in the Bible. And each one of us has to just say, God, the fullness of what you've given, I want to enjoy. God wants to restore you. He wants to take what the locusts have eaten and he wants to give it back. He wants to give you all these things. But it all comes down to the heart. If your heart goes to the Lord in here, then it will all be fulfilled. The fullness will come. A lot of people, we, we, I, I hate to say this, you miss it in the Bible according to the scripture. And if the scripture says it, it's going to happen. Your heart will de determine not the outpouring that God does, but what happens in your life and what happens in the people's lives around you. It's all been given in the promises of God, but it practically will work out in your life it will be received and it will go very different directions based on the, the way your heart responds. When my heart responds to what the Lord is saying in the way the Bible says uh, he wants me to respond, I need to call out to him. Many times we're like, the Bible says in James, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously without finding fault. Many times we think that if we have to cry out to the Lord, Daniel, did Daniel do everything? No, it wasn't his personal fault. The people of Israel were in Babylon and Daniel was with them. And he started to cry out to the Lord. His circumstances changed. And he, when he realized, when he read his Bible, my goodness, it's 70 years. I need, it's happened now. Daniel had to move quick. One of the things the Bible says is that when God comes out of eternity into time and he touches you, when he starts to touch you, it's very, very particular. You have to move. You don't have time to sit around and wait for two or three weeks or watch and see. When you know God has touched you, every time the beginning of a visitation or a stirring is pictured in the Old Testament, Daniel was praying like that day. When the outpouring came and 3,000 people were saved in the book of Acts, they baptized 3,000 people, I think it's men, in one day. The day the outpouring happened, the day the Holy Spirit was poured out, they then had to do the work to finish the job. And their heart would be motivated. You know, your heart can be very, not, we have to talk about our heart being elevated. That usually means pride. What I'm talking about is your heart being motivated. I don't think we all necessarily want to elevate our heart we want to motivate our heart towards God. What does it look like to go towards God? It's not to respond in pride. It's to be motivated to God. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he will lift you up in due time. It's not our place to lift ourselves up. It's not God's way to do that. We got to humble ourselves and seek him with our whole heart. As you step in, what's the response of a heart? What is it that God wants you to do? He wants you to respond to him. He doesn't want you to elevate yourself. He wants us to humble ourselves. He'll elevate in the time he wants who he wants. The same outpour the, the, the end of what will happen with the outpouring is not fixed in your life. It's fixed on God's side that he wants to give it to you. But the heart response might take time for you. The key is do it. Daniel right away started praying and it took weeks for this angel to arrive. 
He said, the minute you started praying, you were heard. That's what the angel told him. But I had to fight my way through. Don't assume why time is taking a long time. You never know why things take a while. Don't wonder as much about what's going on and, and wondering in your mind. God, when he comes into time out of eternity and he touches you, it might take time for things to work out, for things to be imbued in might be quick. But as they're outworked, as the Bible says, you'll start to see the change come through Christ who strengthens me. When your heart goes to where God wants you to go, the, the thing that's so, in, it's so interesting is that what outpouring does is it changes the heart. I'm not sure most people know this. The real reason outpouring comes is to target your heart. The hearts of humanity are targeted by outpouring, the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And that is like it's like not understood by people. We don't necessarily realize 3,000 people were saved on the day of Pentecost because of an outpouring, because it strikes the heart. And then you have a choice. When, God, when God, the touch of God comes, you have a decision to make in time. And it becomes very high stakes. Many times people are like, leave time alone. Don't bring God into it. I'm managing my own faith very well. Thank you very much. I hate to tell you, God's coming into time. He's coming out of eternity into time. He wants to turn you, turn your heart over to him. He's going to have a visitation, an outpouring, and it's going to put you on the spot. Outpouring is the way God wins the heart. You have to turn your heart. You have to cry out to him. And based on that outcry, the, the direction, the fulfillment comes based on that response. What are you looking for? Are you looking for an outpouring that, don't, that doesn't resound in the heart? Then that's not going to happen. There's nowhere in the Bible where you'll see that happen. Very quickly, God can restore things when an outpouring begins. You're not perfect, but your heart's turning to him. And you want to keep it turning. You don't want to go back to what you were. You don't want to listen to the old. You want to say yes to what God has for you today. Does anyone want to say yes for what God has to, for you today? Say amen with me right now. Jesus, I thank you for the heart of people listening to you. I thank you that your words are true. And Lord, I thank you that you've, you can touch us in time. Lord, coming right out of eternity, functioning, a Holy Spirit outpouring for each one of us. I pray we would turn to you in our heart and we would listen to what you would say and we would I just pray you would restore the things the locusts, so to speak, have eaten. Restore the promises of God. Put our feet into the promised land. I ask this today because our heart says yes. In Jesus' name, amen.